Well, we did our picks for uh, baseball over unders a few weeks ago, um, and that's that takes a lot of research for about 30, uh, 32 different or thirty different teams. The good thing about the NHL playoffs, other than the fact that it's the most exciting playoffs of all the major sports, we only have sixteen teams to worry about. So I'm excited to see how we can screw up this group of sixteen teams. But we're going to review a few odds on the series on the Stanley Cup, and then we're going to make our picks. Uh, we'll, we'll try to make it fairly short and sweet, but uh, it should be interesting because it, there's a lot of tight matchups this year. Yeah, uh, you could make the argument that even though we're going from baseball to the NHL where there's NHL playoffs where there are less teams, our chances of screwing this up probably are double from what MLB would be because the, the great thing about the NHL playoffs is that it's always a crapshoot. There are going to be upsets. And it can be difficult to want to take favorites here because you know that element of surprise that comes up in an NHL series. So I think this is going to be a lot of fun. And I'm really anxious to see how your picks match up with mine, Steve. Well, one of the things that I'll, I'll be, we'll do full disclosure on is the games have already started. We're doing this on Monday night. Um, so we're trying to, uh, we tried to get it done, but this is the best time to do it. I have not looked at any scores. So I'm fully waiting to make all these picks and then turn it on, turn on the TV after this and say, oh, there that goes up in smoke. My, that, that's my champion that they already lost in the first game, 5-2, game's over. So mm -hmm. I fully expect to see that happen. Um, so let's start off. I, I think we'll start off the best place is the best series bets. Um, I'll just run through some odds real quick with you. Um, we'll do Eastern Conference first. Best series bets, it's so tight. Uh, the only series are my guys, the Washington Capitals. They're plus 225, Florida minus 290. But every other series in this conference, you know, you got Carolina minus 115, Boston minus 105. You got Rangers minus 105, Pittsburgh one, minus 115. And you got Toronto and Tampa Bay, Toronto minus 120, Tampa Bay plus 100. So tight matchups all the way around. That's not that indifferent from what usually happens, but just amazed me when I looked at it, because even more so in the Western Conference, the Eastern Conference is tightly packed. And you could probably argue, really the only team that I would say I would be shocked to make it out are the Capitals, unfortunately. Yeah, uh, in, going through, in going through the Atlantic, the Metropolitan, the Central, and the Pacific, I only found two series where it didn't take a lot of time to figure out who I was going to take to win uh, that matchup. But you're right, Steve, the rest of these, I mean, are really going to be interesting series. They're going to be probably six, seven game series. Um, I think you could only argue that there's a couple of these matchups that could be over in, in four or five. So we'll make our picks in just a second, but I just want to start off. So my two best bets that I see out of the Eastern conference I like Tampa Bay plus 100 just because that Toronto team, I mean, every year they look loaded, they look talented. It's no different this year. They're a great regular season, but you got Tampa Bay who's coming off two Stanley cups. They've been through all the battles. These guys have been around, you know, Vasilevsky has been around forever. Stamkos has been around forever. I mean, you just have, you have a team that's just full of veterans. I like that value. And the other one that I like because they're starting goalie Jerry's hurt going into the series. I like Pittsburgh. I, I like the Rangers minus 105. So those are my two in the East. Do you have any in the East or do you most of your stuff sit in the West for best bets? For the I had two marked game? down in the East and I'm actually surprised. My, my two were also Tampa Bay and the Rangers. I don't want to get ahead of ourselves too much on these, but the Tampa Bay series, I just keep going back to the fact that Toronto hasn't won a playoff series since 2004. And well, I think that's going to be a really entertaining series. Uh, you know, Tampa Bay winning back-to-back -back championships, there could be a little fatigue that sets in on a third run. It's always very difficult, but I just find, uh, you know, as you did, that there's a lot of value with Tampa Bay there going up against the Toronto team that while being very talented, I think is going to have to really play well to beat Tampa. And then the Rangers are another one that I just, I don't like that matchup for Pittsburgh. I think that the Rangers and uh, um, as you mentioned, their goaltending right now is, is really, really solid. And I don't think these are your father's pens. I, I like the Rangers. I would take the, the money line on Tampa Bay and I'd take it on the Rangers as well. Just to follow up on that, Rangers uh, won the regular season series, which absolutely means nothing in hockey, but they won <laughs> three to one in the regular season. The other one that I was interested in is uh, Boston's beaten Carolina the last two, ten, two of the last three postseasons, but Carolina three and zero against them this year. 
Uh, so I found that kind of interesting. Toronto and Tampa Bay, two, two. And uh, they, I mean, I know one of them was a blowout this past week, but those two teams, they're about as even as you get. So like you said, uh, really, it's kind of the postseason narratives, I think, that give you kind of where you want to go on that one. Well, and you, you've talked about this a lot, you know, being a Caps fan, that with this new arrangement of the NHL playoffs, the Caps, it seemed every year, were running into a very difficult first round matchup. And to look down and see Toronto and Tampa Bay, going heads up in the first round. It's exciting, but I also kind of wish that was a matchup that happened a little bit later on. Yeah, I was always kind of trying to find ways that we could meet Pittsburgh in the conference finals <laughs> and not in the first or second <laughs> round. I can't tell you how many times during the Ovechkin era that really good Capitals teams just didn't get any further in the second round because staring them right in the face was Crosby and company in Pittsburgh. So uh, that's like we said, that's what Toronto has to deal with the gauntlet. They're going to have to run to get in there. Uh, let me shift over to the West real quick. Uh, just looking at the series is you got Colorado minus 450, <laughs> Nashville plus 360. Uh, you got Minnesota minus 150, St. Louis plus 130. Uh, you got uh, Calgary at minus 260, Dallas at plus 210. Uh, Edmonton is minus 250 and LA is plus 200. I only had one decent value play that I thought here. And I've heard a few people talking about this, this LA Kings team. I can't say that I'm well-versed in what they do or know that much about them, but it just seems like decent value. When I was sitting down and breaking down the numbers, I did a thing where I um, took the regulation wins and what the point totals would be if we use the old system, because I think sometimes shootouts, in overtime losses and overtime wins, they throw this whole thing and the points get all weird. Um, and when I looked at that, uh, regulation wins, uh, Edmonton had 38, LA had 35, and the point differential using the old system was only three points off. So they were pretty comparable teams. And to get LA at plus 200, I just like that. What's your thoughts on some of these uh, best bets for the series in the West? I'm glad after agreeing with you in the East that we have a little bit of a disagreement here in the West. I'm actually on the other side of the ledger. I like Edmonton, not so much. I don't find a lot of value on their number against the Kings in the first round, but I like Edmonton as a play. If you're looking to make a little bit of a prop to go to the conference finals, I wouldn't put them to the finals or necessarily uh, as your champion, but I really like, I think that the, uh, you know, Calgary, Dallas, Edmonton, and the Kings, I find that to be the weakest of the four teams. And I think you have a chance there to maybe hit on uh, in Edmonton to get through that, to get past Calgary and to get to, uh, you know, the conference, the conference finals, potentially or conference semifinals. Um, so I like Edmonton there. And then the other one, I, I think that Vegas did a really good job here on these first round series in the West of hitting the number pretty accurately. I, I looked at Minnesota, but I just, that's a hard one for me. If their number would have been a little bit lower, like maybe a minus 120, I would, would go with it. But I think that's pretty, pretty fairly set with Minnesota and St. Louis. You know, the experts have uh, I, a lot of people that I've heard um, talk about Minnesota, this being like a team that could make a good run. They're playing real well. And, and I agree. I mean, it's a strong Minnesota team up and down. Kaprizov is, is just a stud player, unlike one that I think they've had, at least since I've lived in the state of Minnesota and followed them. The interesting part is that exercise that I told you about that I did with regulation wins and points. Minnesota is actually minus six in that. They had 37 regulation wins and 97 points in the old system. If you just do ties, St. Louis had 43 wins and 103 um, points in that old system, which surprised me a little bit. Um, obviously, that's going to be a good series no matter what. But that was the only one. When I lined these up, they pretty much said the same thing as the numbers do in any other way. That was the only one where I looked and I was like, huh, that's different than what I thought. So uh, that was just interesting. And so I thought I'd throw that out there because I've wanted to do that system just to kind of figure out the playoffs ever since. And I, I will just add one thing to that as well, um, that the top teams in the league with the system that I was telling you about, actually Colorado and Carolina, Florida actually was only at 106 points. 42 regulation wins. Carolina had 47 regulation wins, 109 points. When you do the old system, Colorado, 46 wins and 109 points. So those are your top two teams. So the president's cup, you know, president's trophy winner wouldn't even be, they would have been the third best team in that scenario. The worst teams, Nashville and Dallas, no surprise, but the two that kind of surprised me a little bit, like I said, Minnesota was a little bit lower than I thought. And Edmonton was a lot lower than I thought too. That may mean nothing. I'm just looking for a way to try to figure out um, what these shootouts and what these three-on-three -three overtimes mean because they're virtually useless when you try to judge these teams. They're just a way to 
like kind of a quirky way or you know, a way to decide points and figure it out throughout the season. Maybe you've cracked the code on one of these uh, sort of theories that might actually help us who's going to go go pretty far. The one thing I was going to ask you is I find this and we'll get into it a little bit later, but it, I have a lot of chalk here to a degree. One thing to consider if you were looking to make a play is potentially I would look at Florida versus Colorado. I mean, Florida is going to be pretty, pretty hard to stop. So I think, well, Colorado on the other side, if you were looking to try to get closer to an even money play, taking those two to meet in the finals, that may, that may be your path. Um, you know, I, as you mentioned, Na Nashville is not probably going to put up much of a fight and, you know, the Minnesota St. Louis winner could give Colorado a few headaches, but if you get past that, as I mentioned, you know, coming out of Pacific, I don't know if anybody there can beat Colorado, Florida, Colorado. I mean, it looks like that has a really good chance of happening. If you're looking for a way to, to find some favorites and get closer to even money, taking those two to meet in the finals might be your path. Yeah. It's always interesting when you start talking about chalk in the NHL playoffs, because it always <laughs> seems like a good theory on the surface and the front end. And like I said, then you turn on the TV the first two nights and you go, okay, I'm not sure about this, but you're right. I think that is a good play. The other thing I would mention too is, like I said, and I'll stop beating a dead horse with this system that I was talking about, but but Carolina and Colorado. Into this. You put a lot of time into this. You need to talk about it. <laughs> Carolina and Colorado would be your Stanley Cup if you measured through that system. Who has the most points in the old way? Carolina 109. Carol, uh, Colorado 109, uh, like I said, Florida, and actually Toronto had as many points as Florida did in that, in that system, which I thought was kind of interesting too. So I'm not picking this Carolina, Colorado is not my Stanley cup championship, but that's what those points would tell you. So I just want to throw that out there. So when we look back at this, I'll know I should have done that instead of what I'm going to do. When, when, when those two meet in the finals, make sure that you set that aside and you use that for next year when we do this all over again. Exactly. I, I'm hoping to find a system. Maybe I've cracked a code, but likely probably not. <laughs> um, the next thing I was going to move along to is the, the conference final odds um, or, or, or the, you know, the conference winner odds is what I would say. Um, I looked at this and uh, I had a couple best bet values that I wrote down here. Um, for me, the two best bet. Well, let me read them off to you first. Um, in the West, you have a plus 130 Colorado plus 275 Florida, plus 300 um, uh, Calgary, plus 550, um, let's see here, plus 550, oh, see, uh, okay. Actually, it's plus 750 Edmonton. I don't have these in the actual order, so I'm confusing myself here. Um, you have uh, plus 1,000 St. Louis, um, plus 1,600 Nashville, plus 2,250 Dallas, and plus 3,000 LA for, for it to get to the comp, to get to the championship. Um, for some reason, I didn't write Minnesota down here, and I believe they were sitting around that plus 850 or 800 range. Um, and actually, no, they were 750, and I, and I wrote this down. My two best bets here, or my best bet, at least for, comp, for getting out of the conference, were the Minnesota Wild, because they're plus 750. That seems like really good value, and I do think they have a shot to beat Colorado. And like you said, if they beat Colorado, that other end – is wide open. They can get out of there. So I just want to throw that out and then we can talk about the East after this. No, I think that's a good play. And now you've actually, even though I liked Edmonton to hear that the Kings are, did you say 30 to one to get to the finals? Yeah, that's what it says here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, as, as much as I still like Edmonton there at 30 to one to be in the weak draw. I mean, this is the NHL. Anything can happen. I mean, I think that's worth taking a flyer on, to be honest with you, because yeah, the Kings, I have to go look at that played well down the stretch to get in here. I know you're right. And I wrote this down and that seems crazy to me, but um, I'm looking at the Stanley Cup odds and I guess that's right. The funny thing about the Stanley Cup odds is they, these must have been set like last week at some point because they still had Vegas. Vegas had better odds for the Stanley Cup than Nashville, Dallas or the Kings <laughs> the same odds as Washington. So uh, I think that was set up like middle of last week. So, but yeah, I, like I said, I like Minnesota there. Uh, Colorado just, it's just too low. I mean, plus 130 for Colorado. That's not all that exciting. Um, and then you start looking down um, Calgary at plus 300. That even seems kind of low. And then you have to start getting to the other teams. So that's why I like the wild in that spot. What did you, uh, what did you have for the Rangers there. Oh, that's so I'll get to that on the East. Um, so let me read off the East ones for you. Uh, Florida has the best They're at plus 275. Um, then you've got, uh, you've got Carolina at plus 550. Uh, you got Toronto at plus 450, Tampa Bay at plus 500. 
Uh, the Rangers and Boston are plus 800. Pittsburgh's plus 900. <laughs> the Capitals are plus 1600. So, so um, I'll throw out mine. I, out of that, and this goes, I guess, back to what I just saw. I, I like the Rangers now that you mentioned them at plus 800. But the other one that I really like was Carolina at plus 550. I actually think Carolina has just as good of a shot to get there. My only worry about Carolina, and we say this every time, Carolina's going to have trouble getting by Boston. If they get by Boston, I feel pretty good about them. But Boston's beaten them the last two times they faced in the postseason. I still kind of like that, and I'm going to put a little bit of weight, probably more than I should on the regular season. So I'm going to say Carolina plus 550 is probably my best bet. Um, closely followed by, I probably agree with what you're about to say, the Rangers at plus 800. Yeah, for, for, from what you've listed out there, I would say the Rangers to me, that, that was the only one I found true value on. I'm kind of with you. I, I, you know, Carolina, that seems okay, but to come out of the Rangers draw, I still like the Rangers more there. And Carolina, I feel as though this is the year they, they might have to go through a, maybe a playoff growing pain, and then next year they make a bigger move. Um, I would just probably hold off on Carolina here. The only one that really, to me, seemed to be a, a good mark would be, would be the Rangers. The one that I probably put a little too much regular season weight on is Boston because – it feels like anytime I don't know what's going to happen in the NHL playoffs, somehow Boston has a good year. <laughs> like it just feels like that's, you know, when there's a void, they, they are the ones that have the good year and they feel like they're lurking in that way, but they just weren't that impressive during the regular season. So I just can't get to them, even though they seem like decent value, the Rangers at the same plus 800 are better value. I think. Yeah. When you look at the capitals, the pens and, and Boston, to me, one of those is going to find a way to advance. I think Washington's path is just too hard. Pittsburgh, to me, I don't like their matchup. Boston's the one I keep coming back to and thinking that. That one, I know they're not very consistent, but when they're on, they seem to find a way. And going up against the Carolina team that I think has a little bit of pressure on them to you know, make good in the playoffs with what they do in the regular season, I don't think Boston's going to come in nervous. I think Boston's going to take that series pretty deep. Yeah, I mean, that series is going to at least six. So, I mean, I agree. I think it's going to be a really good series. And uh, and Boston's gotten the better end of Carolina, and they sure as heck have good playoff experience. So, yeah, I, I but, but I, for some reason, I like Carolina. I've just said all the reasons why I shouldn't, but I still kind of like them. So, um, I guess the next part we'll go to, I, we'll get to the Stanley Cup odds here real quick, but I just wanted to bring up the story that I find really interesting here. COVID has completely taken away this story that Tampa Bay is going for a third straight Stanley Cup. And the last team to do this in professional sport, can you name the last team to do If you go NBA, MLB, NHL, and, uh, and NFL, who's the last team to win three straight championships? NFL, uh, NFL, MLB, NBA. Boy, is it actually from the NHL? It's not from the NHL. The NHL, it hasn't been done since the 80s. And I was going to talk about that. That's the New York Islanders team. The Islanders, four yep. straight. Yeah. Yeah, you, um, you've, stumped the, me. you've stumped me on this one. I'm going to be anxious to hear this response. So the last two pro teams to do it, you've got the uh, 2000 to 2002, 2000 to 2002 LA Lakers, the Shaq and Kobe Lakers. That's your last three-peat team professionally. And then the other one before them was that New York Yankees, 1998 to 2000. Everyone hates them except for Yankees fans, Derek Jeter teams. I mean, uh, I hate those teams, but that's that's one of your last teams to do it. So that's a painful stat for you to bring up right there. That is a painful stat. And then I'm going to do one more piece of research. I wrote this down and we'll see if I can find it. Yeah. So I found this really interesting. Um, HockeyReference.com, they're really feeding the gamblers all over the world. If you look on, on hockeyreference.com, you can see preseason Stanley Cup odds for every team, I think since like the mid 80s, like what they were, what their odds were to win the Stanley Cup. You can go on any team and check it out. So I just thought it was interesting. I went and looked at all the champions and what their odds were preseason just to kind of check it out. The craziest one was St. Louis a few years back, plus 30, they were 30 to one preseason to win the Stanley wow. Cup. Um, the other crazy one was the year that Carolina won it, 2006, 60 to one. <laughs> so Tampa Bay obviously has won it the last few years. They were nine to one last year and they were plus 675 the year before. But if you look at this and you look at the trends from 2010 
to two that to last year, only three times, yeah, three times has there been a team that has been less than 10 to one odds to win a preseason to win it, which shows you how crazy hockey is. The other one, so Tampa Bay, I gave you the last two years. The other one was your Blackhawks in 2015. They were seven to one. But it, even the Blackhawks in 2013, when they won it, they were 13 to one. Yep. And so it's just, it's amazing when you look at it, when you start getting back into like the early 2000s, you get Pittsburgh at five to one back in 09, Detroit seven to one back in 08. And even like the Colorado Detroit teams are really good. They're under 10 to one, but lately it's just been a crapshoot, which kind of brings me back to what we're going to talk about here. <laughs> and you just, it's the value is what you're looking for because you probably have just as good a chance if you pick the favorite or if you pick the fifth or sixth favorite. I mean, it's just as likely to happen the way the NHL playoffs go. To me, that is what makes the NHL playoffs better than uh, the NFL, MLB, NBA is any team truly can make a run in the NHL playoffs if they get hot. And um, the only other thing that I'll say is I wish we had your metrics. So you could have given us Carolina at 60 to one a few years ago. We wouldn't even have to be doing this podcast anymore. We'd be on a beach somewhere. Yeah, we, we would. And we probably could have made a lot of other people, a lot of money too. Um, <laughs> we'll so there's one here tonight. We're going to make a lot of people, a lot of money here tonight. So hang with us. We will. I'm looking forward to like August when people start looking at our baseball over unders and our hockey predictions. And they're just like, okay, we got to start listening to these guys more. <laughs> um, what I, what I've got that, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to give you the Stanley cup odds. But what I found interesting is I looked at everybody's preseason odds as well. And I, I just kind of did a plus or minus like where they've gone now with their odds from the preseason to where they are now and I'll just give you a quick, quick thing here. Um, you've got a few teams that have really, like Florida at the beginning of the year was plus 2,000, they were 20 to one. Yeah. Now they're plus 550. Um, you had Calgary, who was 40 to one, and now they're plus 700. Um, so some of these teams, it's kind of interesting to look, and this goes back to those odds that I was talking about at the beginning of the year it's kind of interesting to track where they've come, like what it was at the very beginning of the year and now what it is to see how these teams, the expectations. And I think the expectations can tell you like Colorado was plus 625 at the beginning of the year. Now they're plus 325. Everyone knew they were good and they're good. You know? So um, I think that tells you a little bit of the strength of the team and what they have going for them. Um, so I just wanted to rattle this off. I'll give you the Stanley cup odds and then I'll give you who has the best plus minus out of that. So the Stanley Cup odds that I had, um, I had plus 325 for Colorado, Florida was 550, Calgary 700, Carolina um, and Toronto were plus were 10 to 1, Tampa Bay 11 to 1, Boston 16 to 1, Rangers 16 to 1, Minnesota 18 to 1, Edmonton 18 to 1, Pittsburgh 20 to 1, St. Louis 22 to 1, Washington 330 to 1. Nashville 40 to one. And then Dallas and LA were 50 to one. If you want to go crazy on those odds, if you think that they're going to be Carolina from back in 2006. <laughs> um, so then what I'm going to give you here, the team that is uh, that really under underachieved Dallas, well, Dallas didn't really underachieve, but they were 35 to one at the beginning of the year. Now they're 50 to one uh, really out of teams that people expected to be a little bit better than they were. Tampa Bay was actually seven to one. Now they're 11 to one. Boston was 12 to one. Now they're 16 to one. And the Rangers were 25 to one. And now they're 16 to one. Um, as Edmonton was 28 to one. And now they're 18 to one. So just kind of a look at where teams have gone kind of up and down. I don't know how much difference that makes, but I just found it kind of interesting to look at those numbers. Um, I'll start with mine. My best bet out of all this, I guess I'm probably going back to the well. Tampa Bay and Carolina were the two that kind of jumped out at me. Tampa Bay sitting at 11 to 1, Carolina sitting at 10 to 1. The Wild at 18 to 1, they're kind of intriguing too. And I guess if you want to hedge that bet, St. Louis at 22 to 1 is not bad either. Um, so those are the ones I know I just threw out a lot of them. Like I said, those first two were probably my initial best bets at Tampa Bay getting a three two-time Stanley Cup champion and 11 to one's not bad and even this Carolina team that I think is a lot better so we're not picking who's going to win but I'm just giving values for Stanley Cups what, what are your thoughts on that I would say as you went through the numbers the one that really stuck out to me is I thought Minnesota might be closer to a 13 or a 14 to one I think that you're starting to find that more and more pundits are starting to think the wild 
may not win at all, but have a chance to make a run to the finals. And 18 to one, I, that one really, that one really stuck out to me. I think I would make that play on Minnesota. I think they've got a chance to really do some damage. Yeah. And, and like you said, I've heard a lot of people say that. Um, and you hit you know, on something earlier that's really important, especially for the NHL, not so much this year, but moving forward to next year is I think you mentioned uh, Carolina would have been at, at 40 to one. If you make that play before the season, you're in a position now where if they get through a couple rounds, you can hedge on the other side and you're going to be sitting in pretty good shape. I mean, those NHL odds before the season starts, I think give you the biggest chance to hit on something or hedge later than you can get in any other league. Yeah. Calgary, I think what that was the team mainly that was 40 to one. And now they're Calgary. To one. Calgary. Yep. Calgary. Good point. And Carolina. You're right. Even they're 14 to one. Now they're 10. To one. You're right. A lot of them are good. Bet. You're right. These bets are better actually at the beginning of the season. If you have a good feel for who you think might be in the Stanley cup, I can honestly tell you that at the beginning of the year, I, I'm not any closer now to knowing who is going to win than it was at the beginning of the year. The only thing at the beginning of the year is you could look dumb picking someone like Winnipeg or Vegas or something who just doesn't even make it. But as long as your team gets to the dance, you really never know. And so. if you can find some of those teams in the 35 to 50 range and just sprinkle a little bit on three of them, if you get to the point where one of them ends up with a one or a two seed and does any sort of, you know, damage in the first two rounds, you have a really good chance to hedge there. No, I agree. Definitely. Uh, the last thing I'm going to beat my dead horse now for the third, for the back to back to back championships. This I thought was interesting too. So I went back and looked at odds. So there's basically been five teams that have gone for it since the last time somebody won three straight. So the Islanders in 81, 82, they won their third straight. So since then, Edmonton had a chance to do an 85, 86. They were plus 120 that year, didn't do it. Um, then in uh, 88, 89, uh, they had a chance to do it. They were plus 500 at the beginning of the year, didn't. 92, 93, Pittsburgh had a chance to do it. They were plus 400, didn't do it. Detroit in 98, 99 had a chance to do it. They were plus 400. And the most recent, Pittsburgh had a chance to do it in 17, 18. That was the year the Caps finally broke through, which was uh, fun to watch. But Pittsburgh was plus 875 that year. So again, this year preseason, Tampa Bay was plus 700. So kind of a similar numbers to those teams. Uh, but interesting because, you know, the funny thing about Tampa Bay is you've got two different, completely different seasons. And now a third one that's completely different from the other two where they won it. You know, you have them moving along. They were, you know, they got, they had a historic collapse and they lost to Columbus in the last regular season without COVID we had. Then you had the COVID season where nobody in the arenas, they do the weird qualifying round, Tampa Bay wins it. Then last year, Tampa Bay plays Montreal in the Stanley Cup and no one's going to be able to make out a sense out of that in five or six years. I looked at it this year and I was like, wait a second, how did that happen again? So, um, and now this year it's kind of back to normal. So I just thought that was interesting to look at the landscape of what they've gone through and uh, what other teams who are trying to win three have gone through. You're, you're right in the fact that this will go down as one of the, whether they win a third or not, this is the most underappreciated run of a back-to-back -back champion that I think we've seen. And to do it in the COVID year and then coming out and then to be in a position to do it again. I mean, this is, there are no asterisks beside their championships. They've earned these. Yeah, there aren't. The only interesting thing I think is that they're doing it in three different types of landscapes. You know, it's like you had nobody there, empty building. Then last year was kind of like partially full and you only played division teams all year. So you had no idea what to expect when you matched up with other teams. Actually, I thought that was more impressive than anything else to be able to like you didn't even know anyone when you played them, and yet they're still picking off teams left and right. Yep, I agree. So, um, all right, well, we'll get to the the rounds. What I'll do, I guess, is um, I'm going to give uh, – maybe I'll start picking first for the East, and you can pick first for the West since they're the respective uh, conferences that we know better. Um, I'm going to start off Florida-Washington. Um, I'm going to say Florida. I'll, I'll give Washington six games. This could be – less than that um this capitals team honestly they've actually played pretty decent against good teams lately but it's just and they did play florida pretty well but a lot of their matchups were early on in the season against florida i just they can beat them but it's highly unlikely i mean one of their goalies has to get hot their goaltending has been just adequate to terrible all year so i just don't see it happening this Florida team, I mean, they haven't, they haven't, I'm trying to think of the last, I know that was the one year they went to the Stanley Cup finals way back in the 90s, 
I'm trying to think of the last really good run they've made in the playoffs. That's the only thing that makes you hesitant to pick them to go far this year. But anyways, I'm going to pick Florida in six there. Um, Tampa Bay, Toronto. Um, like I said, when I looked at this differential, the way I did it with the old um, standings, uh, again, Toronto was a plus eight, but we talked about it already. Toronto hasn't won a series since 2004, and Tampa Bay's won back-to-back -back Stanley Cup. I'm sorry, that's a tiebreaker. At Tampa, I'm going to go Tampa Bay in seven. I think it's going to be an awesome series, but I'm going to take Tampa Bay. Um, I actually picked Boston originally, and then I went back and looked at the season series, and I don't know why I'm letting this influence me, but just the fact that Carolina won all three games, I'm going to go Carolina, but I think that one's probably due to go six or seven. I'll take Carolina in six for now. And the other one, I think just as bad as the Caps, honestly. So, so when I looked at kind of run of form of teams heading into the playoffs, and two of the coldest teams were the Caps, who lost four straight. Penguins, I think, were 5-4-1 and one heading into the playoffs. And their starting goaltenders hurt. I just don't love the way the, the form they're in playing. Um, I think the Rangers are pretty good. I actually almost thought about getting the Rangers into the Stanley Cup finals. I didn't pull the trigger on that, but I do like the Rangers. So I'm going to pick the Rangers. So first round series, I'm going to go Florida, um, Tampa Bay, Carolina, Rangers. Nothing really exciting to see here. What, what do you have for those, those series? Is? I tried to find a way to make the Florida-Washington matchup uh, go six or seven and have Washington hang around. I'm actually a little concerned about uh, Ovi's injury coming in here. I'm sure he'll play. I'm not worried about that. But uh, for me, Washington has to be right to have a chance to get Florida. I mean, the, the way they score now, now Florida can have some goaltending issues and there's going to be a ton of talent on the ice for both teams, whether some guys are a little past their prime up and comers or just great players. So I still think it's going to be an amazing series to watch, and I can't wait to sit down for that one. I just couldn't find a way to get the Caps past this team. I don't think Florida is going to be in a situation where, you know, they're trying to figure out the playoffs and being this good all year. I just think they're too talented. I don't think this is a Washington team that, that can probably take them to a six or seven. So I'm going to go Florida in five. Uh, as much as I hate to do that to you, I wanted to find a way to get the Caps to a seven, but I think this Florida team is really, really good. Um, the Toronto Tampa Bay series, that's going to be another one, as we mentioned, that'll be absolutely amazing. Toronto with Matthews and Marner, you know, with that top offensive combo, I, I mean, they're going to give Tampa Bay some problems. Um, I, I do hearken back to what we've talked about, though, trying to break through and win that first series. Tampa Bay to me is this is going to be the toughest um, road they have to go through to get to a championship. It, going through a third time, I mean, everybody's gunning for them. But uh, in the first round, I just think the two-time champs are going to be too much for Toronto. I've got it going six. I think Tampa Bay finds a way, and Toronto still can't break through that 4 barrier, and, and they're going to have to wait another year. Um, going down to the, to the Met champ with Carolina, this is where I finally get away from the chalk a little bit. I mean, I look at this, and, and I think, unlike Florida, who will find a way to win, I think Carolina is going to have some problems in this series. And despite the fact that everything went so easily for them, in the regular season versus Boston. This Boston team, as we've said before, they're very inconsistent. But I think that they're going to get hot. The, the good part of being inconsistent is going to happen against Carolina. And I think they're going to take a lot of pride in the fact that they didn't fare very well against uh, Carolina during the season. So I'm going to take Boston to sneak through that one in seven games. And I've got them meeting the Rangers. I think the Rangers versus Pittsburgh, as we mentioned, this is not your typical Pittsburgh team. I don't like they're not coming in with a ton of momentum for the playoffs. And I think that the Rangers goaltending best in the NHL. I love what they're doing. I think that uh, Panarin and Fox have been fantastic. I think this Rangers team um, is looking past just the first round. This Rangers team thinks they can go the distance. And, and I think that they get a pretty good draw here with Pittsburgh. I don't think Pittsburgh's going to be able to handle them. And I'm going to take the Rangers in six. So I'll go Florida over Washington in five, Tampa over Toronto in six. Boston over Carolina in seven, and the Rangers uh, get Pittsburgh in six. You know, the interesting part to build off your thing on the Rangers is about three weeks ago, they actually had a shot to get the, they had a shot to win the division. Uh, Carolina kind of, you know, accelerated a little bit, got away from them. They ended up winning the division. But I, I think Carolina and North, New York, there's not much difference. They're every, New York is every bit as good as Carolina. And I almost think they should be viewed that way. And that's why we've talked about this. I do think there's some value, surprisingly, because usually New York teams, when it comes to betting, they are not very good value when they're good. 
surprisingly, the Rangers, I think, are a little bit underrated this year. Yeah, no, you're right. And I think the fact that they're playing with so many other good teams on that side of the uh, of the 18 bracket probably gives you a little bit of value because there's going to be so much coming in on Florida, Tampa Bay and Toronto. So um, I'll let you start off in the West. The only thing I'll say is um, it's definitely you look at the East and everything is tight. It's really hard in that first round. I feel a little bit different about the West. What, what's your thoughts on these series? Is yeah, I'm going a lot more uh, with the chalk here in the West, Colorado versus Nashville. Um, you know, Nashville, I, I think Forsberg is really fun to watch. I, you know, Nashville, when, when he's playing well, they seem to really be in a rhythm. I just don't see them being able to get by Colorado. Um, you know, the, Colorado's not great on the penalty kill, but in a first round matchup against Nashville, their weaknesses aren't going to be enough to hurt them. Um, and they're really overshadowed only by Florida throughout this, this season. They've had a great year. I got Colorado beating Nashville in five. Then we get to one of everybody's favorite series, Minnesota versus St. Louis. This is going to be a war. Um, and, and Minnesota seems to, whenever you want to buy into them in the playoffs, they kind of let you down. Um, and St. Louis, uh, yeah. as, as difficult as this series is going to be, I am going to go with Minnesota. I'm going to say they're going to find a way to get through here. I just, And this is more gut than anything. I just don't think that they're going to fall to the Blues in another one of these sort of upset um, series. I, I think Minnesota's got things going. I think that um, their goaltending with Fleury and Talbot, I think has been good enough that it can get them by St. Louis. So I'll take a Colorado, Minnesota series, Minnesota getting St. Louis in six. Uh, Calgary, Dallas. Uh, Dallas top line is really good, um, but can they score? I don't know. Going against the Calgary offense that can really light it up. Again, I think this is another bad matchup. Th these matchups don't really um, hold a candle to what we saw on the other side. I think I, Calgary gets this one in six, and then they go on to face uh, Edmonton, as we talked about. I like Edmonton uh, as a potential play to to advance a couple rounds. Uh, I give LA a lot of credit. I think the way they fought down the stretch, they may play as hard as any team uh, in the playoffs, and what they did to get in the playoffs and not Vegas out was really impressive, but I kind of think that emotion just to get in, I think they might have a little bit of a letdown here. And I think McDavid and, uh, and, and the Oilers are, you know, eventually players like McDavid get on a streak where they just really create something exciting. And I think that starts here. I'm going to take them beating the Kings in six. So I'm going to go Colorado over Nashville in five, Minnesota over St. Louis in six, Calgary over Dallas in six, and Edmonton over LA in six. I'm going to pretty much agree with you down the line. The one thing I will say I don't know why Colorado has been amazing all year, but I, I always feel like this is where the NHL gets you. <laughs> There's always that team that looks hot coming in. It happened at Tampa Bay in 2019 when, Colorado, when, when Columbus swept them. This Colorado, they were four, five, and one in their last 10 games, even though they were spectacular. They had a nine game, I think maybe even a 10 game winning streak right before that. So it's not like you really need to be concerned about something that happened the last five, six games of the year when nobody really cares and they're just getting ready for the playoffs. I'm just a little bit worried about that. Worried enough to say it might go six, um, but not worried enough to knock them out. Um, you're right, Minnesota, St. Louis would be war. I'm gonna say Minnesota in seven. That, that one's gonna be a very tight series. Um, my one upset, I'm going to go Kings. I'm going to have the Kings to take down Edmonton. Um, like you said, they just battled to get in. Um, yeah. and I, and like, and I'm just looking and this, I'm going to be totally wrong on this, but I'm just looking at an Edmonton team that really hasn't accomplished much in the postseason. and LA, it's not like any of these guys were really not very many of them were around for anything that happened when LA was having that special run, but I just, this LA team, there's not that much difference number wise when you look at the record and the points like I was looking back, even though I do think there's a lot of difference in the talents on this team. LA is going to have to really grind to win this one, but I'm taking LA in the upset. Um, and the other one, uh, Calgary, I, I always like Calgary. I think I've texted you three straight years at the beginning of the year saying, this is one of my best plays at the beginning of the year. I always say it. I, it's always in, this might've been the first year I probably didn't. Um, they lost to Dallas in the bubble two years ago. Uh, but I like them this year when we win six. So I'm going to go Calgary in six. So um, pretty much the same as you, except I like LA. Uh, I'll take us back to the East to speed it up a little bit. Um, Florida, Tampa Bay is what my pick was in the, in the conference semifinals. And I'm going to take Florida. 
Um, I picked Florida. I think it was last year when they faced each other in the first round. I actually thought Florida had a chance to beat Tampa Bay and Tampa Bay was just too experienced for them. And they broke through. I think Florida's probably kept that in their mind all year. At some point, Florida has to break through. And I really like the way they played this year. And like you said, I mean, the goalies, they do concern me a little bit. Um, Knight and Bobrovsky, they're not the most reliable. I think there's a Bobrovsky and I know Knight is one. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a concerning trio because sometimes they can be really good and sometimes they can be, you know, not, 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 a very, not very reliable. Um, but I, I just like this Florida team. I, I think they will prevail in that series. And then the other one, um, I like the Rangers. I'm going to take the Rangers over Carolina. So my conference final, I'm going to say Florida beats Tampa Bay. I, that's going to, it's going to have to be seven. Florida's going to have to take them down, get, take them to the wire. And uh, I like the Rangers in six against Carolina. Yeah, you hit on the point that really helped me make the pick on Florida and Tampa Bay. I think that Florida has a long memory of what happened last year. I think that they believe they're the better team, and I think they're actually looking forward. I think if they had their druthers, they'd rather play Tampa Bay over Toronto because they want to make a statement. I think they really want a piece of Tampa Bay, and uh, that would be about as exciting as the series as I can think of. Uh, Florida-Tampa Bay, I'm going to take Florida as well. I think Florida is driven to uh, you know, go all in this year and to be able to knock off Tampa Bay. I also just think, I mean, if Tampa Bay can get three straight, that would be amazing. But uh, getting back again to, I think eventually you get a little worn down. It's hard to find a way to break through. And I think Florida might be a little hungrier for this one. And I'm gonna take Florida to beat Tampa Bay in six. And then Boston and New York, we talked about you know Boston, very inconsistent. Uh, I thought we'd get the good Boston versus Carolina. I think we get the bad Boston versus the Rangers. I just think the Rangers are too talented. They, they found ways all year, especially behind that goaltending, to just uh, you know really be effective. And I have the Rangers not really having much of a fight with, uh, with the Bruins. And I got the Rangers winning in five for a Florida-New York Rangers uh, conference finals. And it seems like we're on the same page on this so one. So we're all mashed up here. I think we'll be a little different in the West. Uh, what, what, do you, what do you got there? In the West, Colorado, Minnesota, this one is going seven. There is little doubt. When, when these two have played over history, it has made for some exciting hockey. This is going to be nothing less than that. Um, I, I, as much as I wanted to find a way for the Wild, I got them past St. Louis. I just can't bring myself to find a way to get them past Colorado. Um, it's going to be a really good series, but, but I am going to go with Colorado to beat the wild in seven games. And then I'm going to go back down my other upset. I'm riding this Edmonton team. And I know a lot of people are going to say it's basically a two man show. Uh, but, but I think that, that they're going to find a way they don't have a ton of depth, but when they're on, they're good. And, and I, I just do not buy into Calgary right now. I think Edmonton is going to get past the Kings and I think they're going to find a way to get past Calgary. I'm taking Edmonton in seven games. So it will be uh, Edmonton versus Colorado in the conference finals. I'm, I'm probably buying too much into this regular season end of form, end of regular season form. Um, but this wild team, I just really like the way they're playing. Um, the one worry that I have is they are going to be in a war with St. Louis. Whereas even though I think Colorado is going to struggle with Nashville, I, I don't see them, you know, necessarily expending as much energy as the winner of the Minnesota St. Louis series. Then again, I mean, sometimes those series is that's where you get the life from, you know, you just catch fire when you win a big series and you just keep on going. And that's what I'm going to go with. I'm going to take Minnesota to upset Colorado. I'm taking Minnesota to the conference finals. Never a great idea because they haven't done that since I think the second or third year I lived in Minnesota is 2003 or four was the last time they did that. I'm trying to think of it. I'm looking at the, it was the year that Anaheim won it all, right? Because I uh, maybe yep. it was 07, so it might have been. Do you think? Do you think Wild fans are excited about you picking them to go far, or do you think they'd prefer that you didn't? I think that I get the same reaction whenever I think a Minnesota team is going to be good, and I tell any Minnesota fan, which is, you just don't know what you're talking about. You haven't <laughs> lived here long enough. Minnesota <laughs> teams always disappoint. I'm sure I get that same reaction. I just think this Minnesota team is a little bit different. Um, it was actually kind of fun this winter having the Wild and the Timberwolves, the two exciting winter professional teams for uh, the Minnesota area. And I think this Wild team is going to take it up to the next level and get to the conference finals. Do you believe, uh, my, do you believe that, that Fleury will keep this uh, hot run? I mean, since the trade from Chicago, I think he's been fantastic. That was my only question against Colorado 
is can he keep this up through the postseason? Well, what I was tracking that I found interesting, I was listening to someone talk about that today, and they said that not only does Flurry give him a chance in the playoffs, but he said ever since Flurry's gotten there, Talbot's on fire, been on yeah, fire too. Yeah. So it's one or like now you have a chance of two goalies to do that. Flurry comes out in game one and not great. Talbot comes in and he's been playing great. So you actually have a chance to go to him and not miss a beat. And I think that's big for Minnesota. Um, I, I mean, I'm not the world's most expert on wild hockey, but but I would say that I always feel like goaltending has been something that's been kind of missing. It kind of feels like the caps were like this for a long time. They always had goalies that were pretty good in the regular season and just never played at that same level in the postseason. And I feel like that's the type of goalie, like the wild have had some pretty good regular seasons out of their goaltenders. It just doesn't feel like they step it up to that next level. And part of that is probably the roster composition, of the rest of the team, but I don't really remember a Minnesota goalie and obviously they've only made the conference finals once. I don't really remember a Minnesota goalie just carrying their team, you know, and just catching fire in the playoffs, but I think it might happen this year. So um, in the other game, uh, LA Calgary or series, I like Calgary. Um, I think it, this, you're going to see this theme I, the Calgary. I, I just, I, I just think it's a really complete team. Uh, Markstrom's had a really good year um, in goal. And I think, you know, he stepped it up this year and I think he's ready to even take it to that next level in the playoffs. And I think that's big. This is a team I always think is going to do well and they always kind of disappoint me, but I I'm going to ride them here and I've got them in the conference finals. So Calgary, Minnesota is my West conference finals. Um, I'll bounce back to the East really quick um, just to keep it going. I've got Florida over the Rangers. I really like the Rangers. I, I actually like wrote Rangers in the Stanley Cup and then I'm like, no, 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 no. This Florida team's, I, I got to go with them. So I'm going to roll with Florida, but I think that's six games. I think it's going to be a good series. I'm going to go Florida out of the East. We're on the same page, Florida and the Rangers. Um, I think Florida, you know, and this is nothing against the Rangers. I think they're doing fantastic work getting past uh, Pittsburgh and Boston to get here. But Florida is just going to be too much. There's too much talent. I don't think the goaltending can hold up, you know, series after series after series, and it's going to get harder for the Rangers. I think they put up a bit of a fight, but I'm with you. I've, I've got Florida in six to get to the finals. Who do you have uh, coming out of the West? Colorado versus Edmonton, and this is where the podcast will go off the rails. I am taking Edmonton in a seven-game upset here. I think the Edmonton fans are going to get into it. It's going to be a little bit like what we saw with Montreal when they kind of came out of nowhere. I think we see that again this time with Edmonton. I think Colorado is going to have a hard time going into Edmonton. I think it's going to be crazy. I think Edmonton is going to win the games at home. I think they're going to steal one on the road. And I think Colorado, to your point about Minnesota and St. Louis, Colorado is going to have to really work hard, even if they beat Nashville. It's going to be it's going to be a fight. And then to go through either Minnesota or St. Louis, by the time they get to Edmonton, who I don't think will have as difficult of a path, I think Edmonton might find there. And I'm going to say they steal one and seven to set up a Florida Edmonton Stanley Cup. I'm going to uh, go with the other Canadian team in this side. I like Calgary. Um, again, like I said, I mean, I just. I love Kachuk. I love Gaudreau. I, I just, I, I think it's a, it's a team. They just have a lot of good players, a lot of high end talent. Um, and I, this is what I've been expecting out of them this year. I feel like I've been expecting this for three or four years and probably not, not in a smart way the last couple of years. Like maybe I just thought I saw something that wasn't there, but I've been expecting this. So I'm going to take Calgary to get to the Stanley cup. I got Calgary in six over Minnesota. So I've got a Calgary, Florida Stanley cup. Uh, you have Edmonton, Florida. Um, do you want to take yours first and uh, give me what you're going to do with Edmonton and Florida? I will say this. We lost all of our Colorado fans in the last three minutes. They are gone and they are not coming back for the rest of this telecast. So um, just know that we're going to be hurting in the Colorado demographic moving forward. Okay. Florida versus Edmonton. I've done all I can do for Edmonton. This is as far as they can go. I really believe that this is Florida fate. Um, this is their season. I've got Florida defeating Edmonton in five games. This one shouldn't be too difficult for them. They've been through Washington. They've been through Tampa and they're going to beat a really game Rangers team. I think they get to the finals and uh, it becomes a coronation and uh, they'll take care of Edmonton in five games. I'm going to go with uh, Calgary over Florida. Uh, I'm taking Calgary. Uh, <laughs> I tried to play possum at the beginning because uh, I wasn't giving very many of my plays in Calgary. 
Um, so I waited till the end. I just really like this team. I think they have the talent to win this. To me, this is going to be one of those series where um, it's just going to be open, free flowing. I, I think that's going to fit Calgary. I, I, I just, I, I like, I like what they, you know, I just like their talent that they bring. I, I think it's, I think they're going to, uh, they're going to take it to Florida. Um, I think, what are we at now? We've had St. Louis is the last Western conference team to win, but the Western conference dominated kind of before that Pittsburgh run. But since that time we've had Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, and then the caps and then Tampa Bay twice. So it's been a pretty good run for the East. I think it's the West's turn. So is it 1987? I was going to say we're going to party like it's 1987 with the Calgary Flames. Um, I will tell you this. That is, the, that is the quintessential Steve Geller. You set us up the whole way with Florida. You had us all leaning toward Florida. And then you come with the hammer that is Calgary. And I tell you what, that is the best cliffhanger ending since we figured out who shot JR on Dallas. <laughs> yeah, the only thing is I looked at this and I thought that was a really out there pick. I just looked at all the ESPN experts. The Flames have the second most picks out of them all. Wow. There, there were 19 guys who picked. You had the uh, Colorado was first with seven. Calgary was second with six. Florida was third with four. Lightning four. Carolina three. Blues two. Wild one. Rangers one. Maple Leafs one. Uh, which uh, So, yeah, I, I thought it was out there. I still think it is kind of out there, but I, I'm going Flames. That's what's so great about this is uh, I probably lean a little more gut and you have become kind of the metrics man. So I'm interested to see how this whole thing plays out. And if you found something here, as we said, that not only cracks the code, but allows us to uh, crack the bank and make some money on these plays. Well, if we get the Tampa Bay Rays and the Calgary Flames to win their respective championships, I will look like a genius. Um, <laughs> if not, I'll just be what I am every day. <laughs> oh, man. So just to re recap on there, um, just looking at yours. So you've got Florida to win it all. They are plus 550. I've got Calgary. They're plus 700. Um, so those are the best bets, uh, you know, uh, best bets for winning it all. Um, we gave you some of our best bets for conference title and for the series. Um, you know, so it'll be interesting to see how these how these go. They're, I, I'm guessing the second rounds will be pretty tight and all that stuff. Um, so I don't see any wild outlandish bets, but I would say we both are kind of in agreement that Minnesota and the Rangers are good teams to keep an eye on if you want to try to make some money and hope some upsets happen and see it. And then we're giving you Florida uh, in Shane's case and Calgary as champions. So uh, that's that's what we got. Uh, that's how we can wrap it up. Um, but yeah, I, I think it'll be a fun playoffs and I'm interested to see how how much our picks true hold true to form. One last betting strategy. That is going to come into play starting tonight with uh, the, the puck drop of our first few games is that if you see a team that you like in the first round, second round, doesn't matter. And that team that you like drops the first game. There is no better value than an NHL uh, series where you like a team and they lose the first game where their odds all of a sudden become very high. And you can go from a team that maybe was a minus uh, 150 all the way to a plus 150. That's a good play to make. I mean, if you find uh, hypothetically, if Florida were to lose to Washington in game one, you're going to get immense value overnight on Florida just because they're down 0-1. They're probably still going to win that series. But I always say try to look at those early games. And if a team gets in a quick hole that you still think has more talent, play that team because you're going to get better value. Another one of my favorites that I'll reach out with is uh, if you went to, with game ones, they're just – up in the air, it doesn't matter what the odds are. Betting on a team like Nashville in game one with the money line or the Caps in game one with the money line, I, I love those plays. I mean, because really in game one, you just don't know what's going to, teams don't even know what's going to happen. It's really after that first punch of game one and even game two that things really start to settle in. Um, so I love, like when I just go through my picks the first day, I love to just say, long shots, let's take ride you that first day and see what happens and then we'll go from there. And if you're getting three teams at plus 250 or around that mark, you really only need one to hit to do anything positive. So, and if you hit two of the three, you're laughing. So we've given you a lot to think about. Um, we'll be back uh, later with some other stuff, with some college football, uh, maybe even uh, some uh, French Open. We'll see what happens. Um, uh, but for now, like we said, uh, Florida coming from Shane, Calgary coming from me. We'll see what happens. Sounds good. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. Okay, here we go.